Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Good afternoon, New Day. Mm, good morning. Six minutes, six minutes. I'm so glad to be here today. We start a brand new series called Water Walkers. For those who've been following with us, we've been on this journey together since our series Crave, trying to understand what are the desires that are within us trying to tell us. And through that series, we learned that we all crave for something so deep within us that nothing in this world can actually satisfy it. And it taught us that certainly that is an indication that we are made for another world. In the next series, we, we identify that there is a next world that's coming, that there is a promise of a next, that God will restore all things, that God will make all things new again, and that he will make them new for all of us, including himself. Last week, Pastor Molly showed us and told us about the idea that that story that we've been talking about, this idea of a world that isn't yet but already is, seems like a fairy tale. In fact, she showed us that it has all the elements of a great fairy tale. But the beautiful part about it is that it's true. It's a fact. It's a fact. It's not something that's just make-believe. It's not too good to be true. That it is a fact that God will restore all things. That God will come through for us. Yet, in the midst of that, we find ourselves in the very real world of today. The very real world where problems come. Where prayers go unanswered where you are wondering, what is God even up to? Is there a ceiling where my prayers get trapped? Why is it that life sometimes deals us the worst cards? Often in this life and in this world, we find ourselves facing those things that are insurmountable. But yet, it is in the midst of these insurmountable feats that God calls us to be water walkers. To walk in his divine authority as we deal with this life. Water walkers, I say, my definition for water walkers, are people who live by God's unbeatable power to overcome life's insurmountable feats. People who live by God's unbeatable power to overcome life's insurmountable feats. This is what I mean by being a water walker. God's call to us to be water walkers in this world is not a call to uh, avoid our situations or avoid our problems or avoid our disappointments, but rather to walk through them. David understood this when he, in one of his prayers, he says, he, he ends, he signs off with, I will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will walk through. That was his understanding that we are called to walk through life's challenges. 
life's difficulties. And all of us get them, whether you're Christian or not Christian, whether you're a believer or not a believer, whether you pray or don't pray, we all get disappointed. Every single one of us deal with disappointment, doubt, wondering, is this God that we worship truly up there? Or does he care about me? This idea tells us that water walkers actually face the most problems. Water walkers are those who do not run away from the problem, but run to the problem. Water walkers do not avoid the storm, they walk into the storm. In fact, water walkers have learned that the very conditions that are meant to beat us are the very things that will make us unbeatable. Water walkers understand that the very things that are trying to put us down are the things that will lift us up. Water walkers understand that what's meant to harm you will actually heal you if you walk in God's divine authority. So much so, water walkers understood that God didn't stay up in heaven to deal with our problem. He came into our problem. He didn't make a command from up there, out of our problem, out of our circumstance, out of our situation, and said, let that be fixed. He walked into it and fixed it himself. We serve a God who uses the things that beat us to form us. He uses the very things that are standing in our way to make a way. <laughs> it's so good. God does not shy away from your mess. God does not shy away from messy things. It is in messy things he shines the brightest. So much so that the beginning of our story, the beginning of our very real fairy tale, starts off with, in the beginning, God. And the very next thing we hear was darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. God walks in, in the presence of chaos. From the beginning, God has been teaching us, it's not about not having problems. It's about getting through the problems. So here's what I'd love for you to leave with today. Here's what I'd love for you to repeat tomorrow. Here's what I'd want you to memorize in your mind. Here's the thing I want you to remember on Friday. When you face something insurmountable, it is not time to give up. It is time to lean in. When you face something insurmountable, it is not time to give up. It is time to lean in. When you and I face something insurmountable, it is not time for us to give up. It is our time to lean in. Because the insurmountable only comes because your breakthrough is around the corner. The only reason why insurmountable shows up is because the narrative is about to change. The only reason why you're facing something insurmountable is because you are about to mount to the next level. That's why insurmountable stands in the way. But it's not your time to give up. It is actually time to lean in because you understand that the very thing that's in your way is the very thing that will make a way. When insurmountable shows up, don't give up. Lean in. Let's see what scriptures has to say about that. There's a story recorded in Matthew chapter 14, starting at verse 22. 
you heard it right before I started. It says, immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side. One has to question, why immediately? What happened beforehand? I'll tell you. I'll give you a couple of cheat codes. Here's what happened. They've just walked away from an incredibly exhausting day. Jesus, previous to this, had found out that he had lost his cousin. He had dealt with the pain and the grief of loss. Yet, that didn't keep him from doing what needed to be done. He was trying to get away, to take some time, or as this generation would say, he was trying to do some self-care. He wanted to go out and spend some time alone. He wanted to take time for himself, as this generation would tell us, don't keep extending yourself for others. Do some self-care. Hashtag self-care. And Jesus on his spa day in the desert was just about to take some time to reflect on what has just taken place when a group of people recognized he was going away and found their way to him. He started talking to them and caring for them and and seeing what they needed and having compassion. He delayed his spa day, his disciples really wanting to get away on the journey and wanting to spend some time on vacay as well, said to him, why don't you hurry up and dismiss the crowd so we could be on our way? They gave a perfectly good excuse, as you and I do when we want vacation. They said, we don't have enough food to take care of all these people. Why don't you send them away and they can take care of themselves? You know, that seems pretty logical to me or... As, as you and I would say in this generation, they are putting some proper boundaries on their lives. And as they were doing that, Jesus looked at them and said, the only reason why you exist is so that others benefit from you. I will not send them away. You feed them. Well, this is insurmountable. This doesn't make sense. We've counted 5,000 men, and we know they're the minority. We haven't even counted the women and the kids. This is unbelievable. This cannot be done. And Jesus goes, figure it out. (laughs) One of the disciples got this bright idea. He's going to give Jesus a solution that's not really a solution. He's going to go, oh, we've got some food. It's only five loaves and two bread. I'll see what you have to do with that. To his surprise, Jesus goes, give it to me. Because when you face something insurmountable, it's not time to give up. It's time to lean in. So they go, all right, no worries. Here you go. Here's the basket. (laughs) Little boy who had his picnic lunch ready to go. He was probably the only one who had food. He thought ahead. He had Tiffany as his mama. I'm sure his name was Noah. And I can imagine him in the crowd going, but mama, that's my food. Harper, get your own. And mama goes, no, don't worry. Jesus is going to do something pretty crazy with this. So Jesus grabs the bread. He breaks it. Ooh. Because in the moment where you're facing insurmountable things, you don't get healed right away. You must be broken first. Because it is in your brokenness blessings exist. So he breaks the bread and blesses it. And then he passes it on to the disciples. I I can imagine this story, like many miracles in the Old Testament, doesn't look like it's going to happen. Because it's almost like the, the miracle where this man is told to pour oil into every bottle. And each time a new bottle shows up, more oil shows up. But when the bottle runs out, the oil runs out. And I can imagine the disciples are looking at this and they're going, you want me to pass this out? But each time they're passing it out, more bread shows up. More bread shows up. Because you see, the way God deals with us, he doesn't give us the solution ahead of time. It's as you keep trusting, you keep getting. That's why when you face something insurmountable, it's not time to give up. 
it's time to lean in. <laughs> so they keep passing out bread. They're giving this, and it's crazy that this bread is going. And the narrative tells us that by the end that everyone is fed, everyone in circles, everyone's eaten, some had seconds, everyone's full, they're like, it's time to take a nap. In my culture, we call it the itis. It's the moment where you know you're ready for that Sabbath nap. You've had a good lunch. You're getting tired. And before you know it, you're snoring. <laughs> They're full. And here's the crazy part. They started off with five loaves and two fish. After everyone's fed, they have 12 full baskets. They started off with five loaves and two fish. By the time everyone's fed, they have 12 full baskets. When you're going through something insurmountable, it is not trying to break you. It's trying to mold you. What you'll have left over is greater than what you'll start with. I promise. So Jesus is amazed, the disciples are amazed, and it says now Jesus is the one. Immediately, as soon as everyone's fed, as soon as everyone's taking, take, taking a nap, Jesus immediately made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. He dismisses the crowd. He tells them to go away. Now, why is it so urgent that he goes away? Because Jesus understands that this life will spend you, and you need replenishing. You need restoration. And the only place you can lean into is the presence of God. So it says, after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. By himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Jesus dismisses the crowd, leans in because he's in pain too. It's his very cousin that had passed away and not in a good way, extremely tragically. He's dealing with that. He leans in to pray. He enters into the very presence of God. He understands that the only place to lean in when the insurmountable shows up is in the very presence of the Father. Because it is in the presence of the Father you'll find power. It is in God's presence you'll find power. Here's a secret, folks. Here's a secret, Christian. Here's a secret, believer. Here's a secret, those who are curious, not yet committed, wondering if this thing is really true. Let me tell you something. The best place to start your day is not on social media. It is in the presence of God. When breaking news start, instead of getting into the conversation, get on your knees. And if you don't know how to pray yet, if all you can do is whoever's up there help me, he'll get your email. It's time to lean in. The thing that's important to understand about this is that Jesus is in prayer mode. He's praying. The disciples are on the boat. What should have been a very short journey has become a very long journey. Don't you realize that the things that bring you joy seem to go very quickly, but the things that bring you pain seem to take forever? Am I the only one? Winter seemed very long in Colorado. And yet, it's about to start all over again. 
The things that bring us pain seem to take a long time. And here they are. It says that they're in the boat and they're being buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. That word buffeted is the same word. Watch, is the same word that this author uses when he talks about being tormented by spiritual evil. The word buffeted is almost like the word persecuted. They are being tormented. They're dealing with something they don't understand. Have you ever gone through a season that seems supernatural? It doesn't seem normal. Why would this happen? Why am I going through this? Why is this happening to me? This doesn't even make sense. This is what the disciples are going through. The waves are being them left and right. They're going, why is this happening on the Sea of Galilee? Why? This is just the lake. Why is this happening? They're buffeted by the waves, and the wind was against it. While they should have made the journey by now, they're still amid the storm. And Jesus is alone. Here's my problem with this text. And this is only a two-part series, so I don't have all the time I need. But there's a problem that arises in this text. Jesus sent them into the storm. He told them to go ahead, and he did not go with them. That's a problem. Sometimes in life, it seems that the God you've put your trust in has failed you. And the problem you and I have is that he knew you'd face the problem before the problem faced you. And yet, he let the problem come through. I believe that the very things that seem insurmountable are the very things that God uses to mold us into who he knows we are. They are not meant to beat you. They're meant to beat you into shape. <laughs> it's not meant to break you. It's meant to break you free. It's not meant to make you give up. It's meant to call you in. He's not trying to get rid of you. He's trying to draw you in. He's trying to draw you in. That's why when you face something insurmountable, it's not time for you to give up. It's time for you to lean in. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went, on, went out to them. So now they've been on the lake and it's, it seems like it's all night. Dawn is coming, and they're still there. And Jesus starts walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said. Well, I, at least we know they believed in ghosts. Or at least they couldn't understand what was happening, so they said it must be a ghost. They said, and they cried out in fear. Here's the thing. There are moments in life when even God will seem terrified. There are moments in your life where it will feel, it will feel that God is not on your side. There are moments in your life where you will feel that the very person you're meant to lean into is the very person that's scaring you. And here's Jesus' response to those moments. Jesus immediately, 
oh, do you see the urgency? Jesus immediately, Jesus immediately, Jesus immediately. Why is it immediate? Because he doesn't even want fear to take root in your life. He immediately said to them, take courage. Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Ooh, this is the good part. Watch this. <laughs> this is the good part. Listen, Jesus says, he looks at them, he walks on the water, he doesn't warn them before, he doesn't warn them, he just manifests his presence in their lives in a way that they are not used to. Here's why. Because there are so many depth to who God is, you will never know the fullness of God. God never does the same thing twice. He never does the same thing twice. He never does the same thing twice. You can never say, this is God. This is not God. This is God. This is not God. We don't know God. It will take us a lifetime and an eternity to fully understand the depth of who God is. And he will always show up in our lives in a way that we cannot fully understand. And when he shows up in that way, it is not for us to be fearful. It is time for us to be faithful. Because he will never let us down. He shows up in new ways so you can understand his depth, his goodness, his grace, the extent to how much he loves you. He shows up in new ways so you can understand how deep he is. It's the same way a husband, a good husband, you know, like me. We don't do the same things twice. I didn't take, I didn't take Tiffany on the same date, right, Mark? Mark has a date book. Right, Mark? I'm just saying this about him. I hope he does. I do. A date book. It's all the date ideas I have for Tiffany so that I can shock her every time. And I, I, I can't wait to, I bring it, I do it this way, I do that, and then she goes, wow. And Tiffany and I, Tiffany, you remember we had a saying, every date I brought her to, I'd go, Jose, good. Good, Jose. <laughs> Every single date looked different so that she understood I had depth to me. God shows up in different ways so that you never get bored. You can never get bored with God. This is why your solutions to your own problems are boring. You come up with the same ones each time, and they never work every single time. God's solutions to your problems are different each time. The last time there was a storm, they did not expect God to be walking on water because the last time there was a storm, God was in the boat sleeping. And all they had to do is go, don't you care about us? This time, he didn't even allow himself to be in the vicinity so that they can ask the question. He walked into their environment so that they can see, even though it looks like he's not around, he is always near. He walks into it in a way that they didn't expect. He walks into the storm so much so it looks terrifying. His answer to them is not take courage, it's okay. He says take courage, it is I. Notice that he reaffirms them. He takes away their fear by saying the same God you knew then is the same God I am today. It is me. You don't have to be afraid. The phrase, do not be afraid, shows up 365 times. 365 times in the Bible. 365 times. How many days are in a year? How many? There's a don't be afraid for every day of the year. Because every day of the year, God knows you'll face something that will frighten you. This is the human experience. Every day of the year, God knows you're going to need a reaffirmation. Do not 
be afraid. It is I. But I am the one mastering it. Ooh, listen, listen, listen. The storm is around them. It's beating them left and right. God comes walking on the water. Jesus shows up. He's walking on the water. They say it's a ghost. What I'm going through is something I don't understand. And God answers. Jesus says, it is I. Do not be afraid. Whatever that looks like it's mastering you isn't mastering you. I'm the one mastering it. I'm walking over the thing that's beating you. I'm walking over it. You don't have to be afraid. I, I'm walking on the thing that's beating you. I'm walking on it. You don't have to worry about it. I'm walking on it. The very thing that's shaking you, the very thing that's caused you to doubt, the very thing that's causing you to suffer, I'm walking on it. It is I. You're not by yourself. This is not your problem. This is not for you to handle. I'm the one handling it. I am mastering the thing that looks like it's mastering you. Do not be afraid. It is I. Peter says, watch this, watch this. Peter goes, oh, Lord, Lord, verse 28, Lord, if it's you, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Ooh. Peter got the memo. Listen to his prayer and how specific it is. Peter says, if it's you, I know you. I trust you. If it's you, tell me to come. Because when you face something insurmountable, it's not time to give up. It's time to lean in. Peter says, I want to go into the thing that's trying to beat me as long as I'm coming to you. He leans into the presence of God in the face of something that seems insurmountable. Watch, 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 watch. Peter hears the words, don't be afraid. The rest of the disciples are going, hmm, I don't know yet. And Peter goes, if it's you out there, that thing that's been knocking us around all night has no power where you are. If you can walk on it, I can too. Come on! Come on! If you, if, you, if you can walk on it, I can too, because I know you made me to be a water walker. I know you called me to participate in everything you participate in. I know you've made me to be a co-heir with you. So if you are walking on it, I walking on it too. His command, his prayer to God was command me. The NIV says, tell me. The King James Version says, command me. Why command me? Because Peter understands that whatever God declares becomes a principle in the universe. If you say, come, the thing that's beating me, I will walk on. And God will do the impossible to get you to him. The miracle is not walking on water. The miracle is coming to God. Walking on water is a byproduct of leaning into God. <laughs> Jesus says, come. <laughs> come. And Peter, now, 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 you and I would say how? He would go, do you have a rope? <laughs> Am I supposed to push the boat? Peter doesn't do anything because Jesus has just changed the reality of things. And Jesus will do whatever it takes to get you to come to him. Some of you are here today because Jesus made a miracle for you to come here. Listen, listen, listen. The miracles in our lives are not the things that change. The miracle is when we change. 
The things that have come to destroy you are the things God uses to mold you. It's not meant to destroy you. It's meant to make you who you really are. You are a result of victories after victories after victories, which means you're a result of battles after battles after battles. The reason why you have wisdom today, when someone comes and says to you, why don't you just go do that? You remember the last time you did it, what happened? That's called a victory in your life. Those things formed you, mold you, made you. And God is saying, when you face something insurmountable, don't give up because it was never meant to beat you in the first place. It's meant for you to lean in. So Peter says, command me to come. Jesus says, come. And this man starts walking on the water. The very thing that was knocking him around all night, he's now the first recorded surfer. Walking on the water. You and I are called to be water walkers. Here's the thing. Peter never said, Lord, make me walk on water. It would not have happened. He said, Lord, command me to come. When you're going through something, your prayer should not be, God, get me out of this. It should be, God, draw me closer. God, draw me closer always gets you out of the storm. Because God and storm don't live in the same place. Watch, watch. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me be real tangible with you. Let me help you. It isn't that, watch this. It isn't that the storm leaves. It's that you've entered into the presence of the one who's mastered the storm. Do you want to know how I know the storm didn't leave? Because all of a sudden... When people looked at Peter walking on water, he started looking at himself. And then he realized the storm is still here. There are times when God takes away the storm. But most often, you and I experience a life where the storm remains. The only thing that changes is the proximity we have to the person who's mastered every storm. You will get through this, not because this thing goes away, but because God comes nearer. And when God comes nearer, you change. And that's the miracle we're all looking for, to become the people God has destined us to be. You are meant to be a water walker. So when you face something insurmountable, don't give up. Lean in.